So in this section of chemical data, I'll be talking about uh, the different types of uh, chemical data which is available today and how and in which domains people use chemical data. So here you can see uh, the types of chemical data is from the drugs, the approved drugs, uh, the agrochemical industry has lots of chemical data, the natural products uh, also has lots of chemical data in it, and, and this natural products is kind of linked to drugs as well as the agrochemicals and there are some food additives which you use for daily preserver for uh, daily usage or you know uh, the additives which are used in food to make of uh, to make it like you can keep it for a long time and also the fragrances which are like very aromatic compounds so there's a lot of chemical data around around in this uh, in this in this all this uh, domain and people work a lot in the different uh, area of interest so but our area in this course is mostly focused on on the drugs so i'll try to figure it out so what data do we have about drugs and for example on this slide you can see uh, for example data on drugs like the chemical properties the solubility the adme and the pharmacokinetics and the dynamics the lethal dose that is ld50 and the inhibitory concentration that is ic50 there are some structural properties of the drugs like uh, structural uh, chemicals chemical structure properties like uh, the molecular weight uh, the log p and uh, something like and, and so on and also like there are the chemical reactions a compound is reacting with another compound producing some other product and so there's the, there's data on that and also like there is also lots of data on the chemogenomic interactions like the chemical gene data so how the chemical is interacting with uh, uh, in the when the gene is expressing so they do some microarray data analysis on that uh, the chemical disease interactions if there is any disease they do some phenotypic screening uh, if there is a person or anything or tissue they extract, extract the tissue and just put the chemical on and try to figure out whether uh, the compound is showing some activity against that particular disease and there is some chemical gene ontology based enriched interactions and the chemical pathway chemical and the biological pathways uh, enriched associations apart from that it also has the data also can uh, you, you can find the adverse events so suppose a person is ha taking some drugs uh, you might uh, see on the drugs.com that a uh, person writing okay I've taken this drug I'm having some cardiac problems I'm having some breathing problems I'm having some stomach ache or something like that so those uh, we can consider those as adverse events or, or or kind of side effects of the drugs and also there is some toxicological data so how much toxic uh, or how much is it environmental friendly or kind of uh, is it safe to take the drug so all this all this stuff comes uh, into into action when we do uh, when we when we work on the drug discovery data so I'll try to show you uh, uh, some examples uh, like what we try to do in, in drug discovery. For example, uh, in the next slide, uh, consider the consider the ADME, so the adsorption, distribution, metabolism, and uh, ingestion. So the first we try to model uh, these kinds of uh, you know properties like the cell permeability and the absorption and the bioavailability. So there are some various models how we model these kinds of properties. So first, the uh, passive transmembrane diffusion. Uh, we used to use a model known as the PAMPA model, which is very popular. So PAMPA is known as the parallel artificial membrane permeability assay. Uh, so it indicates like how well compounds can passively diffuse uh, through a model of a membrane or through a lip lipid infused uh, artificial membrane. So once we get that, we try to simulate that with the human system, and actually it mimics the human uh, human membrane systems. So that we try to uh, try to identify, okay, these drugs can can get can cross the membrane, the bilayer membrane, is in some gradient. So also there are some other uh, property we try to do predict is the cell permeability using some CACO2 and MDCK. The CACO2 is kind of mimics the human intestinal cancer cell line. Uh, that can form a well differentiated monolayer on a solid support and it actually mimics the human intestinal epithelium where most drug absorption takes place so this is very important we try to model that uh, 
here with the capo 2 model and there are some other uh, properties like absorption which we model by the rule of uh, Lipinski's rule of 5 and, and some other some computational models and some, the bioavailability where uh, the drug which reaches the site of action we model it from by some uh, the pharmacokinetic studies so these are the different for example in, in ADME if we want to study how the drug is absorbed, distributed, or metabolized and ingested, we try to model these kinds of but there are various models uh, we try, this is an example we, when we try to model these kinds of properties. So how, uh, so, uh, so for example, so how do we model uh, one of these properties? So for example, if we try to model the partition coefficient, uh, for example, uh, you can see the partition coefficient, which we call the log p, or we all, it's also known as the distribution coefficient, which is the ratio of concentration of a compound in a mixture of two immiscible phases at equilibrium. So this is uh, the concentration with the octanol and this is the concentration in uh, the aqueous medium. So we consider at pH is 7.4. So now log D is like uh, when we take different pH uh, level at uh, level uh, at like for example by 5, 6, 7. So pH indicates the acidity of uh, indicates the acidity of a system pH 7.4 indicates the system is neutral. If you go below pH 7.4, it goes more. It 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 gets more acidic. And if it if it is above um, 7.4 and like till 14, so if the pH increases uh, from 7.4 towards uh, 14, it indicates uh, al alkali alkaline uh, alkalinity. Uh, so these coefficients are a measure of the difference in solubility of a compound in these two different phases and uh, and it's very popular in pharmaceutical research it's because in, in our system we have these kinds of phases like the lipid phase and the aqueous phase and uh, how the compound will distribute in, uh, itself in these various kinds of phases because it gets uh, passively diffused into the membranes and then sudden, sometimes this uh, the phase uh, the phase change also you know will 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 also like you know hamper or kind of will also uh, come into action with the distribution of the compounds so this is very this log p and the log d is very important uh, measure to to we need to calculate uh, if if it is uh, like uh, if it is well below a certain limit so you know like lipinski uh, if uh, lipinski rules say that the compounds uh, which uh, are log p below five, uh, they are they are more promising as the drugs. So why we use our, our log p is because it's fairly easy to measure and correlates well with many biological properties. And people have also made accurate predictive models of log p. So coming to the next slide, so how we model this log p? So the model log p can be calculated as some of fragmental or the atom based terms of the chemical so for example we are taking this phenylpetazone compound and we used to fragment this compound and then after that we add some corrections to it so for example the measured uh, phenylpetazone uh, log p is experimental values 3.16 and uh, there are there, there's various kinds of fragments they used to uh, they used to they used to like uh, they, estimate they have their own uh, uh, log p values. So once what we do, we use to add, we to fragment that, and we just to find out uh, the individual fragments log p, and then sum it up and the, the calculate the final log p. So the basic trick behind this, we need to fragment it in in, in a good way. So there are just many the various algorithms of doing this fragmentation, and there are various. Uh, ways you can measure log p not only this one there are atom based properties it counts the number of atoms also and then just adds up all that because every atom has a kind of a log p value so another way is like it adds up all the atoms together and finally it calculates the log p so there are various approaches of log p and uh, of calculating log p and everything and, and uh, you can do uh, I can share a lot of papers on on modeling log p. So why we consider log p? Because what what does it affect? So it's very important. So 
this is a graph which is very very important well, so it does so this one shows a log p the increase uh, so if you increase the log p of a compound so it indicates the binding to the enzyme so by it will it will bind more readily to the, the enzyme and the receptor whereas the aqua solubility decreases and also the binding to the p4 the metabolism enzymes increases and absorption through the membrane also increases binding to the blood tissue and proteins dox free also increases and binding to the hurt hurt and for cardiotoxicity risk risk is also increases so you cannot increase log p2 or like very much because it will increase binding into the some herg proteins which will cause cardiotoxicity and you don't want your compound to bind to the blood and tissue because it's not binding to the right site of action rather than it's binding to the blood proteins and some tissue uh, surface proteins which is not uh, which which will which will actually decrease the free drug into the system so you know so you need to optimize this log p to a certain level so that it gets optimized in all other different kinds of properties uh, so that's why Lipinski or uh, from there Lipinski studied all the all the properties of hydrogen bonding ac uh, acceptor hydrogen acceptor log p and the molecular weight to identify the certain uh, limits of uh, of of a drug in a system so uh, uh, so how do we predict these kinds of log p properties as you have seen either we add this compounds and uh, all the stuff together but there are other advanced methods of doing that so you can uh, uh, you can use molecular descriptors which are features which characterize properties of a molecule so but what you can do is like uh, you can calculate these features and try to correlate with the experimental value with the uh, uh, with uh, with uh, with these properties and try to make a regression equation calculate the r square and just try to optimize that whether the experimental value is very uh, very uh, very close to the predicted value and if you have a good r square value of 0.9 it indicates that your model is really good in predicting the log p so there are various descriptors uh, people use they are the topological geometrical electronic and the hybrid descriptors so, uh, so coming to the topological so they are like the atom and the bond counts total number of atoms total number of bonds there are some substructure counts so actually if they used to find some substructures in the chemicals like the max keys which are 166 and there's acid of fingerprints which is also a substructure key and try to and try to give a bind bit vector zero of bit vector create a bit vector of zero and one if 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 they have uh, like a substructure in the in the in the main structure there are also other indices like the Weiner index Randig index and the chi index so and also there's the kappa indexes i won't go in depth of all these uh, in this indices because these are like mostly on chem informatics core if you want to take the course uh, you can just consider i571 where we we can uh, we can go in depth of these indices how they calculate it or I can suggest a book uh, how to how to do it and it's also given on the website uh, which book to consider there are also path based descriptors which is one of the very popular like ECFP and the FCFP which is like the circle of fingerprints and also some topological descriptors like the molecular symmetry and the distance some connectivity also takes into account so these topological descriptors used to like sh like calculate the topology of the molecule and then you can just calculate it and try to correlate with uh, uh, like to make a predictive model based on the log p and try to see that whether topological descriptors were capable enough to predict the log p so there are other descriptors also as i as shown you on the slide the geometrical ones which uh, which are like the three which represent the three dimensional uh, uh, three dimensional representation of the molecules and descriptors which take uh, to account are the principal moments of inertia, the molecular volume, the solvent accessible surface area, the charge partial surface area, and the molecular surface area. So these are the geometrical descriptors mostly people use uh, in, 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 in calculating different kinds of properties or try to make a predictive model. Mm. And there is other some of the electronic descriptors like the dipole moment the polarizability, the highest occupied molecular orbital, the lowest unoccupied 
molecular energies, molar refractivity, dielectric constants. So these are as you can see uh, so these are like electronic ones uh, which actually takes uh, uh, which takes a bit of time in calculating these kinds of descriptors but mostly like uh, people use this 2D descriptors the topological ones uh, mostly they use this and sometimes when they do some three-dimensional searching they use these kinds of descriptors if they want to find some uh, compounds based on 3D similarity and something like that uh, these are the descriptors that uh, if you want to model you can just calculate it and try to figure out uh, which which descriptors gives you a very good model so this is uh, all about this how we get the chemical data from and what we and how do we model it or how do we use use the chemical data in modeling different purposes for example log p or you know the other properties of ADME which i've showed you so there are some tools i've given here to calculate these molecular descriptors and these are like freely available one is the cdk tool the chemistry development kit and the rd kit is based only on python this power mb which is based on uh, the windows platform so rdk you can write programs and cdk you can write codes this one is based on java this one is based on c++ but uh, the python uh, api also also is included there's also other one from fta this is mol2 uh, descriptor and the other one is paddle which is a kind of uh, windows uh, which is a kind of gui program or and also as a command line interface to calculate various kinds of descriptors so thank you.